Hey carpoolers, how is it going? Today is Wednesday, May, I don't have a clue. Maybe 29th, I don't know. My week has been so jacked up. I hope you guys had a wonderful Memorial Day and was remembering all of our families that are in services and just thank you for your service. Um, I don't even know where to begin. I've tried so many times to make a video regarding what to prepare yourself and your home for before surgery and I still have all of my notes and stuff I want to share with you guys. Also what to pack in your bag or what I packed in my bag. I also want to share that with you. I did record that video actually and right in the middle of recording it just started downpouring rain and I kept talking louder hoping that you would be able to hear everything I was saying but then when I played the video back all you heard was the rain like hitting the windows and stuff so it wasn't uploadable in my humble opinion so I didn't upload it and I'm gonna be re-recording that but today I want to just share with you um, just stay tuned and look forward to those videos uh, but today I want to share with you two embarrassing medical things that have happened to me since surgery um, if you're new to my channel my name is ST welcome to the carpool I predominantly film in the car because I live so far away from everything <laughs> but um, we talk about all kinds of things here weight loss related I am post-op four weeks now for vertical sleeve gastrectomy I had the surgery done on May 8th and it's the end of May so it's four weeks um, Surgery weight was 324 pounds and today I weigh 304 according to my scale But if I weighed on the doctor's scale, it would probably say under 300 pounds the day that my scale says 300 pounds I'm gonna have a little party. <laughs> I haven't seen under 300 in quite a while Anyhow, so let's get on to the embarrassing thing first thing was mortifyingly embarrassing for me I'm a very private person if you've seen my past videos, you know that I'm keeping this surgery on the low um, so my first day back to work, I took a week off of work, um, to heal from surgery. I was actually in the hospital from Tuesday to Friday. So I got home Friday and I rested Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then Tuesday was supposed to be my first day back to work, but I didn't go back to work because, um, it was the end of the school year for Little Bill and they were having an awards ceremony in the morning. And since I live so far away from everything, it would have been too much for me to go to her award ceremony and then drive to work to drive back just to be there for a few hours. So I went ahead and took Tuesday off and my return date was that Wednesday. So Wednesday I went to work, or Tuesday I went to the award ceremony and it was okay. It was kind of like prepping myself up for how work is going to be, sitting up straight like in a chair, you know, and it, it was a little rough, but I knew it was only a couple hour ceremony, so I was going to be able to go home and, and rest the rest of the way and be pumped up for work on Wednesday. So <clears throat> Wednesday I get to work and I'm probably there for about an hour. I talked to my boss, which she knows about the surgery, um, and you know, told her how things were and stuff, and I was still very sore. Sitting upright in a chair was a little uncomfortable if I turned certain ways, but for the most part, it was fine. Um, at one point, I had to use the restroom, so um, I went to the restroom, and I had started my lady friend the day before. And I have heard about people talk about how heavy Aunt Flo is after surgery. And I just paid no mind to it because I have PCOS. I get a period like maybe once a year. I just eh, wasn't really paying attention to it. Um, they weren't kidding. It wasn't traumatic or anything, but it was heavier than the normalcy. So anyways, I used the potty. And when I go into the bathroom, there's three stalls at work. There's the handicap stall. There's the stall on the end, and then there's this wee little stall sandwiched in the middle that literally, for a big person like myself, okay, figuratively, not literally, figuratively, for a big person like myself, is just about the same size as a bathroom on an airplane. It is tiny. Like, you literally have to straddle the toilet to shut the door and lock it, and then, you know, do your business, and then move out of the way so you can make enough room for the door it's tiny anyway there was somebody in the handicap stall 
there was somebody on, or no, the handicap stall was gross. Somebody left a mess. And there was somebody on the other end stall. So my only choice was the little tiny weeny stall. So I go in there, I do my business. Granted, after you have surgery, it takes you a while to do business because you, you have to bend and reach and you know, I'm not trying to TMI you guys to death. It's just real news here. What are we doing people? That's not even a turn lane. Sorry, carpool moment. Go ahead then. Um, anyhow, so it takes you a while. And when you're in a tiny bathroom, trying to maneuver around with your big rear end, it just makes things a little bit, excuse me, ask that, a little bit more difficult. Um, anyway, so what I think happened was, I think I might have got up too fast or not sure exactly, but when I got up, I immediately saw, or when I leaned up, I immediately saw spots and I was like, oh, Esty, get a grip there, sweetheart, come on. And I, I did not feel very well. So I opened the door and I don't even make it to the sink and it's just like, <laughs> I couldn't see anything. It was blackout mode. There is an ancient credenza, which you might've seen in some of my Insta hand pictures that is in the bathroom. And I got up on it, sat for a minute, and then I was like, nope, I'm going out. So I laid down on it because I did not want to hit the tile floor. So that went on for who knows how long. <laughs> And then one of the nurses walk in, and I know her, and I was so grateful because I didn't want anybody else in our department to walk in and be like, girl, what you doing? And she was like, are you okay? And she was like, your face was just white, like all the blood was drained out of your face. And I was, I'm like, hey, I'm like, I need your help. So she's like, what do you want me to do? And I said, can you? I just don't know. I just wasn't making any sense, but I was trying to like make it not as a big deal as it was. I, I couldn't sit up. Like I just had, I don't know, my blood pressure bottomed out. And anyways, it was disgusting and humiliating. And luckily it was just her and I in the bathroom for a while. And then um, she was able to go back to my office and get my cell phone so I could call a cowboy and tell him, you know, I think you need to come pick me up. Something's not right. And, uh, of course, at this point, all these people, it's like 10 o'clock break time, all these ladies are coming in to use the restroom, and they see me all Casper face, you know, like, <laughs> on the credenza. So I was like, please take me out of here because I am so embarrassed. Anyway, I had to go home. I called the surgeon's office, and they said, what are you doing back at work? And I'm like, nobody told me I couldn't go back to work. I work a desk job, for crying out loud. And they're like, no, you need to go home today and push fluids. Push, 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 push fluids. So I did that. I went home, um, I laid down, and I pushed fluids. My boss called me and said, go ahead and take tomorrow off and just rest. So that's what I did. It was very embarrassing. <laughs> but, you know, not a lot of people saw it. Um, but the people who did see it were like, every day since I've seen them, were like, are you okay? How are you feeling? You know, and I'm just like, oh, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for your concern. Um, just pretty embarrassing. And anyway, so that Friday, my father-in-law passed away. Um, he has been battling stage four bone cancer for about three and a half years now. So um, he went home to be with the Lord and he's not suffering anymore. You know, it's always sad to see somebody go, but you know, on an unselfish note, he's just not suffering anymore. So that Friday I was also off as well, but it was more of a bereavement type thing. Um, so yesterday, this past weekend was Memorial Day, and yesterday I was off for bereavement because it was my father-in-law's memorial service. Well, about 11 o'clock in the morning, I started to get this weird pain. And it's so hard to describe what it is. It was like, if you could put this into words, that's what was going on. But it was like coming from the right side, your heart's on the left, so I knew it wasn't heart related. It was like coming from the right side and it was almost like going up, but it like stopped here. And then my muscles and my neck were just would tighten real tight. And it started kind of low key and it got progressive 
and then it was just like a full-blown eight pain on the one through ten scale it was an eight and I couldn't swallow anything my mouth was like pouring saliva and I tried to throw up several times and nothing would happen because I thought man if I just threw up everything would be okay and nothing would happen and it was just pain so painful and I like to think personally that I'm somebody who has a medium to high pain tolerance um, even after surgery I you know I, I didn't deal with this type of pain so um, at one point after dealing with it for a little over an hour and the pain being very intense I started to cry <laughs> and of course my daughter was home and she has never seen me cry and she was like why are you crying she got all upset and I'm like I'm, I'm okay I mean I couldn't control my face I was in so much pain I couldn't I was like squishing my face up and I was trying not to I was trying to put a brave face on for my daughter and I'm like I'm fine I'm just having a tummy ache right now which wasn't a tummy ache um, I was like go watch go watch TV give mommy some privacy I'll be okay so I called one of my friends that I knew was off yesterday and I was like do you mind picking little Bill up and having like a play date with your daughter because I am feeling really bad right now and she was like sure no problem so she came over and she picked up little Bill and she took one look at me and she was like I'm not leaving you so my daughter and her daughter went to her mother's house and she took me to the ER <laughs> I was starting to get concerned after like an hour and a half of dealing with excruciating pain that I had a blood clot. Um, normally, I am not an ER person. I can't tell you when the last time I went to the ER. The last time I went to the hospital is when I had my child, nine years ago. I'm not an ER person. Um, I'm kind of a stubborn person. I go to the doctor when it's it's pretty rough, but I was, I was in pretty amazing pain and I'm like you know what I can't risk this being a blood clot and like going to my heart or whatever so we went to the ER and I was there I missed my father-in-law's memorial service which just crushed me and I felt so bad for my husband but I had a CAT scan I had an EKG I had chest x-ray um, I had a heart enzyme test where they take your blood one moment and three hours later they take it again to measure the enzymes and I am glad to say I am blood clot free, no pneumonia, heart looks super healthy, however, um, I was experiencing esophageal spasms and there is no known reason why it happens. Sometimes it happens to older people when they drink something super cold or drink something very, very hot, but which was not the case for me because I was actually just cleaning up around the house. I wasn't eating or drinking anything. I was just going around like daily activities, getting ready for just the day. And um, they don't really know why they come on. Um, I didn't eat anything spicy, hot or cold. And there's no, there's really nothing you can do to prevent them because there's nothing to say it wasn't an isolated case. It may happen again. If it does happen again, at least I know it's not a blood clot, um, and I'm just going to have to really just bear through it, which I'm not looking forward to. So, long story short, esophageal spasms suck really bad. Um, that was some pretty intense pain. Uh, when I got home, I was discharged from the hospital, and I got home, and I laid in bed awake for so long, just dreading that they might come back. And uh, they didn't, but even today I'm like so aware, like sipping on water and just trying to chew everything really good and eating slow. Cause I just, even though it wasn't brought on by eating or drinking, I'm just so scared that it's gonna happen again. Anyway, <clears throat> if your post-op has anything like this happened to you, please comment below. I wanna know I'm not the only weirdo out there. Um, I don't wish esophag esophageal spasms on anybody. They were quite horrid. Um, but that's where I am. And I hope you stay tuned to my channel. Um, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe now. And click the red button below. Um, I will be uploading a video soon on um, how I prepared my home or what I wish I prepared in my home before surgery. And also maybe a separate video, maybe a combined video on what I put in my bag and what I wish I put in my bag um, pre-op. So I hope you guys are having a wonderful Wednesday and I'm alive.
<laughs> I'm doing so much better, really. I know I'm looking a little rough today. I forgot my glasses at home. Ooh, punch buggy copper. Classic, no punch back. And of course, nobody is in the car where I can get the points I deserve. Anyway, y'all saw that, right? Okay, well, I hope you have a good Wednesday, and I will see you soon. Ciao.